The United Nations Secretary General welcomes the formation of a new interim government in Libya. I welcome the selection by members of the Libyan Political Dialogue Forum of a unified temporary executive authority. And I call on all members of the dialogue and the Libyan and international stakeholders to respect the results of the vote. It is essential that all foreign fighters uh, and mercenaries move first to Tripoli and Benghazi and then leave the country according to the new schedule that was defined. Now, this comes after a UN-led uh, forum voted on the interim uh, government to run the war-torn country until general elections are held in December. Turkey, which has troops on the ground in Libya, also welcomed the formation of the interim government. The North African country plunged into chaos after the 2011 ouster of longtime dictator Muammar Gaddafi. Since then, the country has been ravaged by violence amid conflict between the two seats of power based in the cities of Tripoli and Tobruk. A fragile ceasefire agreed in October has largely held. Tim Anderson is the director at the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies and joins us now out of Sydney. Tim, it's always good to see you. What's your reaction, what's your views to the latest developments in Libya, including the new interim government there? Thank you. Yes, um, it's a compromise, temporary compromise which all sides have applauded, but it hasn't resolved the underlying tensions there. And this is the problem of 10 years of disastrous fragmentation in this country after NATO destroyed the government 10 years ago. We have two NATO powers fighting for influence, France and Turkey, and we have other uh, powers, Russia and Egypt, very concerned that there isn't a resurgence of a sectarian Muslim Brotherhood in Libya. So the issue hasn't been resolved, but for the time being, there are representatives from the two rival governments in this interim body. Do you think foreign parties will respect the uh, what the UN General Secretary General has said um, and um, try and bring work towards peace in the country, in the war-torn country, uh, especially the two sides that you cited, Turkey, which has troops on the ground, and, from, and then France? And indeed, Mr Erdogan has refused the call to withdraw his troops, which include mercenaries recruited from North Syria and from the region. Um, France is at odds with its NATO partner over that. And as I said, Russia, there's not just two sides, there's more than two sides there. So those sides want peace on their terms. So the crunch hasn't really come yet. Let's see if the elections are going to resolve that. But I suspect not. The problem is, from the long term, that their the political will has been destroyed in Libya for the last decade. And I think that's something that suits NATO in many respects. Right. So just finally, with regards to the the elections, the upcoming elections uh, at the end of the, the year, you don't um, uh, are you optimistic about that? So do you think they can stretch to that to, until the end of it's the year with, with it being peace on the ground in Libya? It's difficult to say. There's not a really um, I don't think anyone could make a confident prediction about that because, as I say, foreign powers have now entered into this ambit and it's going to be played out according to those interests and they, Turkey and France and uh, uh, Egypt, of course, has a very important state because it has a very long border with, with uh, Libya and it doesn't want to contemplate a resurgence of the Muslim Brotherhood, which had experience with in Egypt. So these foreign influences are not played off so easily. and. It seems uh, unlikely that even an election is going to resolve those tensions. Okay, Tim, we'll see how that one unfolds uh, in the future. Tim Anderson, thank you very much indeed. He's the director at the Centre for Counter-Hegemonic Studies. Tim, joining us out of Sydney.